Welcome back to Maths Genie and today we are going to start with application of derivatives. This is the part one of the video. Uh, if I recommend if you don't know the basics of derivatives or differentiability, we have uploaded the videos of the same so you can go back and refer to those videos as well. So uh, to start with, I would like to take an example of a line, although we are going to talk about curves in the entire chapter. That is why we use derivatives, right? Okay, so you take this example and you will understand that the very first concept that we talk about in the application of derivative chapter is rate of change of a quantity. Okay, so um, rate of change we will talk in detail, but first you understand this line example. Okay, so this is a comparison of how long a bike takes as compared to how long does it take to walk around the city? Okay, so that is what we are going to calculate. It's a comparison between the bike time and the walking time. Okay, let's just plot uh, two points. Uh, I am taking uh, this point. Let me change the color. Uh, I'm taking this point, which is uh, 5 and 15. And another point that I'm taking is, um, say, this this point this is 10 and this is 30 okay so these are the two points that i'm going to use uh, for the plotting purpose okay so i have 5 15 and another point that i have is 10 and 30 okay now i need to find the slope of this line so slope formula we all know y2 minus 5 1 is equal to x2 minus upon x2 minus x1 so that is what i'm going to do this is y2, y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So 30 minus 15 will give you 15. And 10 minus 5 will give you 5. So this will give you 3 and 3 upon 1. Correct? 5 ones are, 5 threes are. What do I conclude from this? This is a very strong... Uh, so we've got the answer but my aim was not to find the answer my aim was to tell you what rate of change is what does 3 upon 1 mean 3 upon 1 means that for every one minute biked for every one minute biked How much time is it taking for walking? For every one minute bike, it would take three minutes to walk. This is what the conclusion is. And this is how you find the rate of change. Y upon X. So these were the Y values. These were the X values and Y upon X. This was the rate of change. So every time you know that three minutes of walking equals to one minute of bike. So these this is applied in various fields. Okay. So we're going to look at some of those examples as well. Now let's come to a formal definition from this chapter. What is rate of change of quantities? So whenever one quantity y varies with another quantity x, in that case, you had bike versus walking satisfies some rule dy by dx correct slope is represented by dy by dx y upon x correct so in derivatives we call it dy by dx so represented by dy by dx represents the rate of change of y with respect to x there we had a rate of change of walking with respect to biking okay now i'll take some uh, quick examples which will make it super clear Find the rate of change of area of a circle. First, I'm not reading the entire question. I'm just going part by part. So, he's asking me area of circle. Do I know what the area of circle is? Uh, yes, I know it. A is equal to pi r square. Okay. Uh, per second with respect to its radius. Okay. When r is equal to 5 centimeter. Okay, cool. This is what I know. Now, what do I want to find? Rate of change of 
now pay careful attention what will come in denominator what will come in numerator this is how you will understand rate of change of of what area rate of change is d by d d dy by dx so d a what will be in denominator with respect to what radius so in denominator you will have dr okay so d by dr and in place of this a i am going to substitute the formula pi r square so with respect to r you have so anything other than r is a constant so pi is a constant so i am not calculating the derivative of pi so what will be the derivative pi and what is the derivative of r square what is the derivative of x square it's 2x right so what is the derivative of r it's 2 r okay this is rate of change of area with respect to radius this is what he wanted me to find right but in the question he has given me 5 cm also so i'll just put the value of radius nothing else and you have your answer already so your answer is 10 pi what was important is to understand why you have da upon dr because the question says so rate of change of area with respect to radius okay 10 pi a uh, centimeter square of the area upon radius okay so this will be the unit let's look at the next question the volume of a cube is increasing at the rate of 9 cubic centimeter per second okay so he has given me the rate already he has given me the rate this sentence means volume dv because rate so upon per second means time so dt is how much 9 correct 9 volume upon time so volume unit is cubic centimeter upon uh, time unit is seconds so this is what this is how you interpret the lines of the question second line how fast the surface area increases with the length of an edge when it is 10 cm okay we'll we'll move ahead with that first let's just try and make sense out of what we have just seen okay so um cube so i'll just assume certain things let x be the side of a cube okay and v capital v means volume and let capital s be surface area okay one more assumption i'll make here uh it's not a assumption let's just write formula v formula for volume what is the volume formula it's the side cube so side is x so side cube and uh what is the formula of surface area of a cube if you don't remember go to chapter 10th and just uh, write down a list of formula and revise so what is the surface area of a cube it's 6 into side square okay these were our basic assumptions now let's get back to what was given this statement dv upon dt is equal to 9 i'll just write it again what is v v is nothing but x cube correct v is nothing but x cube is equal to 9 so what is the a, what is the derivative of x cube it's 3 x square into so now there is a catch 3 x square you will tell me okay done derivative of x cube is 3 x square but you have dt here only 3 x square would have been the answer if it would have been d by dx and x cube so my answer would have been straight forward 3 x square but 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 here you have with respect to t so it will be into dx upon dt correct so why we have dx by dt here you understood right because if we would have had dx in the denominator 
the answer would have been only 3x square but you have dt here you don't have x here you have t here so i will have to give respect to that t so hence i am giving respect in this form okay and 9 as it is so this dx by dt is equal to this 9 and this x square will go in denominator so you will have 3 ones are 3 3 are so you will have 3 upon x square is equal to dx by dt okay now let's get back to what was asked how fast is the surface area increasing okay let's let's just do it for the surface area as well d so he's asking me ds by dt so s formula we have written what is the s formula 6x square correct 6 is constant so can't help it what is the derivative of x square 2x into because we have dt here so dx upon dt i've just found out dx upon dt below it's 3 upon x square let me just substitute it 3 upon x square so 1x gets cancelled 1x gets cancelled from here and what you have left is 6 2 are 12 12 3 are 36 upon x is equal to ds upon dt but again go back to question and the edge is 10 centimeter okay let's substitute 10 here 36 upon 10 is nothing but 3.6 how will you write the unit for surface area area unit is centimeter square upon t so what is the unit of time it's s so this is how you write the um, notations okay now let's get to the next question the length x of a rectangle is decreasing at the rate of 3 cm per minute and the width y is increasing 2 cm per minute just let let's just take only this first statement to understand length x is decrease rate correct so it, it will be upon d upon d here what will you have length x is decreasing at the rate minute so you will have t here decreasing at the rate of 3 so this was your first sentence now let's come to the second statement again you have rate so you will have something d upon d then width y so y with respect to time so it's increasing at 2 okay now you'll ask me what will we do with this term decreasing a lot of students miss this term okay decreasing so because it is decreasing we will have a minus sign here okay so this is a star mark step this will be dx by dt will be minus because it's decreasing again now let's come to the actual question when x is 10 centimeter y is 6 centimeter find the rate of change of perimeter and area of rectangle so let's first find the rate of change of perimeter what is the formula for perimeter of a rectangle it's 2x plus y correct so i have to find rate of change rate of change means something d upon something d rate of change of perimeter so this is what i want to find so in place of p can i write this formula 2 is constant i'm just ignoring 2 okay what will i have is this will get multiplied inside dx upon dt plus this is more of a substitution kind of a sum this has no derivative value kind of finding so dx by dt already i know it's minus 3 and dy by dt is 2 so i just have to substitute it's minus 3 plus 2 minus 3 plus 2 minus 1 minus 1 into 2 minus 2 since since it's perimeter the unit will be centimeter upon minute 
this was perimeter what else he has asked me to find out area of rectangle so let's look at the next part which is finding the area so finding the area you have x into y area of rectangle then you have uh, you have to find the rate of change so in place of a what i'm writing is x into y now this is u into v rule of derivative correct what is the rule u derivative of v plus v derivative of u correct derivative of u into v as it is plus u into derivative of v u into v rule uh, if you don't know the formula go and you can always go back so dx by dt value i already know it's minus 3 and dy by dt it is 2 okay this is minus 3 into plus this is uh, this is 2 into now x and y value also given in the question x is 10 y is 6 x is 10 and y is 6 okay so when you solve this out what will remain is 2 minus 18 plus 20 and since it's area upon time so this is how you find it out in this question only this involved derivative otherwise it was not a derivative derivative kind of a typical question okay let's move ahead to the uh, interesting part which people are unfortunately more, most cared about is increasing decreasing okay and it's very simple okay i'll just try to explain it with the graph here okay now observe only this part okay let me just take a pointer observe only this part from left to right okay from left to right 0 to 1 2 3 4 okay and it's increasing right from left to right if you see it's increasing i'm just drawing the tangent to this it's increasing so the function for this we will say that the function is increasing for the values x greater than 0 so 1 2 3 4 is greater than 0 right so for any value for x greater than 0 it's an increasing function now let's look at this this part from left to right now first question very basic question minus 2 is greater or minus 1 is greater minus 2 is greater or minus 1 is greater of course minus 1 is greater so the value is increasing from this side okay you have minus 3 here so minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 the value is increasing from this side left to right but as you go from left to right your graph is dipping down correct as you go from left to right the height of the graph continuously decreases Hence, the function is called as decreasing function for all the values for x less than 0. This is what increasing decreasing roughly looks like. We are of course going to look at one sign uh, curve and it's going to be super clear to you. Okay. Let me just take out the sign curve. Yeah. So, in the sign curve, you observe that till pi by 2 from 0 to pi by 2 the function is increasing okay from 0 to pi by 2 the function is increasing from pi by 2 to pi the function is decreasing again from pi to 3 pi by 2 the function is again decreasing only so from this to this your function is decreasing from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 your function is decreasing correct but if i ask you a mixed question you understood right it's decreasing it's very clear but if i ask you a mixed question i ask you tell me 
from 0 to pi from 0 to pi so you will tell me from 0 to pi it's increasing also and it's decreasing also so it's neither increasing so such type of functions are called as neither increasing nor decreasing i hope this increasing decreasing concept is very clear just always imagine the sine curve okay but always in the questions you cannot draw graphs correct some questions will have huge polynomials so it's not always feasible to draw graph and check so we have some another method so let's look at that method firstly in that method always you will have to find the first order derivative just the normal derivative okay so i have listed down the three types how to determine increasing and decreasing functions so f is increasing in a and b when can i say that f is increasing when i have the value of f dash of x as greater than zero that's it you can ignore all the all the parts okay when i can say that the function is increasing when f dash of x is greater than zero when do i say the function is decreasing when the value of f dash x is less than zero and when do I say that the function is constant when the value is equal to zero? Okay, it's very it's simple to understand as we solve examples, you will understand more. Okay. Now there are only two types of question asked in this chapter. Either this type or this type. So the first type is uh, find the interval of increasing and decreasing so for example this was in the sign question 0 to pi by 2 was the interval when the function was increasing so this part is called as interval so they can ask you to find interval okay this is one type of question second type of question is find the interval in which the function is given by f of x and is increasing or decreasing we will take both of the questions this might sound sim uh, be sounding uh, very similar to you but it's not okay uh, i'll just quickly take an example and then come back to this slide because we have just two types of questions okay show that the function is so this is the first type you will have to show that it is increasing and the second type is you have to find the interval okay let's show it's very simple okay always to show increasing decreasing to find the interval increasing decreasing always 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 the first step is find the derivative so let's find the derivative of this f dash of x okay so how do i find f dash of x x cube derivative is 3x squared minus 3 is a constant term x square derivative is 2x plus 4 is a constant term and what is the derivative of x x derivative is 1 okay very clear now what i have asked you is that's it your first step is done your question is solved in the first step itself now just what what remains is a basic algebra okay so to make it an even uh so i'll just take three common here this will become 2x then this 4 i'm splitting as 3 plus 1 so let me just write it for you if it is confusing you guys let's just add one more step okay because we we have three everywhere so i'm just splitting this four into 3 plus 1. Now I am taking 3 common. x square minus 2x plus 1 plus 1. Okay. Now this is a square. a square minus 2ab plus b square. So this is a square of this term. This you will be able to easily recognize as you solve more and more questions. Okay. Now I have to prove that it's increasing. Increasing means what? f dash of x value should be greater than 0. So, this value should be greater than 0 always. Then I can say it's an increasing function. So, let's just start putting values. Let me put uh, 1 here in place of x. 
So if I place 1 here in place of x, you will get 0. 1 minus 1, 0. 0 into 3, 0. 0 plus 1, 1. So if I place 1 here, you will get the value as 1. Okay. If I place minus 1 here, okay. Of course, if you put 2, you will get a positive value. 3, 4, 5, you will get a positive value always. Let's put minus 1 and let's check. So, minus 1 into minus 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 square. Any numbers negative square is positive. So, you will always have a positive answer. Correct? Ma 3 into minus 1 into minus 1 square plus 1. If I put minus 1 in place of x. So, you will have this, correct? Then you will have any negative number if you put, you will get a positive answer only because the square of a negative number is always positive, correct? So, every time your answer is going to be in short greater than 0 for every interval. Hence, therefore, I can say that f is a increasing function. Okay, let's talk about increasing and decreasing functions and uh, specifically how to find the interval. So, these are the steps that you will find in all the questions and if you follow these steps, you will be sol able to solve any kind of interval question. Okay, so what, what is the first step? Of course, we find f dash of x. Then you put f dash of x is equal to 0. You will get some value. Then you will plot it on a number line. And then you will go back and check the sign for f dash of x. So, let's just solve uh, at least 2-3 examples on this to make it more clear. Let's find the interval for this question. What was the first step? f dash of x, right? Then what was the second step? Put f dash of x as 0. So, I'm just going to follow these steps. So, this is my f of x. I'm going to find the f dash of x. What is the derivative of x square? It's 2x. 4 is constant. Derivative of x is 1 plus 6 derivative is 0. So, you have 2x minus 4 as f dash of x. This was your first step. The second step was put f dash of x as 0. Okay. Let's do that. So, this minus 4 goes this side becomes plus 4. So, x becomes 4 upon 2 which is 2. So, you've got the value, right? What did I mention here? You will get a constant value. Then what was the next step? Plot it on a number line. So, let's plot it on a number line. Okay. So, you have 2 here. So, generally, if nothing is given, nothing is given in the question. For example, they could have told you from uh, say minus 4 to plus 5 or whatever. So, they have not mentioned any value. So, when there is no value mentioned, you just write minus infinity to plus infinity. So, we are done till step 3. What is the step 4? Check the sign of what? f dash of x. Okay. So, let's check the sign for f dash of x. What was f dash of x? Answer 2x minus 4. Correct f dash of x answer was 2x minus 4 and we have two intervals here correct one is from minus infinity to 2 and another interval is 2 to infinity correct this and this are the two intervals so it's very clear actually from the question that you will put here from minus infinity if you start so naturally for this domain, you are going to get a negative answer or any answer less than 0. Correct? If you put any value, any negative value in this f dash of x, you are going to anyway get an answer which will be less than 0. So, what I can say is for this interval, for minus infinity to 2, where did I check? Here, right? comma f dash of x which is 2x minus 4 is less than 0 correct therefore the function is decreasing for minus infinity to 2 therefore 
the function is decreasing in the range of minus infinity to 2. Then, what was the second domain? 2 to infinity. For 2 to infinity, of course, your value is going to be positive for f dash of x. f dash of x, 2x minus 4 is greater than 0. Therefore, the function is increasing at 2 comma infinity. So, this was a pretty simple question. I just did four steps. Thak, thak, thak. Okay. F dash of x, put 0, plot a number line. Then again, check if the value is coming positive or negative for f dash of x. Now, I'm going to take a very tricky question. Okay. You will have to pay super careful attention for this question. It's going to be quite a lengthy question, but I have selected the toughest from the increasing, decreasing part that you have in the textbook. Okay. Uh, so, as usual, my first step has to be finding f dash of x. So, let's find f dash of x. This is my f of x. Okay. So, I'll find f dash of x. What is the derivative of sine? It's cos. Into derivative function considered as x. If I had plain x here, I just had, if I had only x here, then I could have written sin x derivative cos x. But I have 3 extra here. So, I'll have to do this additional step. 3 is a constant. Derivative x is what? 1. So, the f dash of x answer is 3 cos 3x. So, this was my first step. What is the second step that I've written? Put f dash of x is equal to 0, you will get constant values. Okay, let's follow the second step. Second step is put f dash of x is equal to 0. So, in place of f dash of x, I am putting 0. Okay. So, this 3 will go that side and become 0 anyway. When is the value of cos? This will become cos inverse. When is the value of cos 0? Cos theta is 0. At what values? So, first let me just write it in the inverse form so that it becomes easier for you to understand. This cos goes that side becomes cos inverse of 0 is equal to 3x. When is the cos value 0? Cos pi by 2 is 0. And, and, and cos pi by 2 is 0. Also cos 3 pi by 2 is also 0. So, in place of, so I will have two cases. Cos inverse of 0 is pi by 2. And it's also 3 pi by 2. When I get the answer, I'll uh, know which one is valid, which one is not, or both are valid. Okay, so I have to find x. So, this 3 will come here and will become this. Again, this 3 will come here. So, you have two values, which is pi by 6 and pi by 2. How will I know which of the value is valid? So, firstly, what we did, I'm just revising. We found f dash of x, correct? Then we put f dash of x is equal to 0, you will get constant value. We got the constant value, okay? So, we are at the right track. We got the constant value. How to check what is the constant value, right or wrong? Go to the question and see if any domain is specified. So, he has specified. Whatever value you get, it should be in between 0 and pi by 2, correct? So, 0 and pi by 2. So, pi by 2 is a valid. Pi by 2 is valid because it's between 0 and pi by 2. Pi by 6 is also valid because pi by 6 falls between 0 and pi by 2. Pi by 6 is lesser than pi by 2. Correct? So, 
pi by pi by 6 is nothing but 30 degree and pi by 2 is 90 degree so any value between 0 to 90 degree is allowed so i got two values this time for x what was the third step now i've got my constant values third step is plot the number line okay now let's plot the number line let's plot it on a separate page altogether okay so what is the value of x i've got x value i've got pi by 6 and pi by 2 so i'm just plotting it on the number line now so the value given in the question is uh what 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 did he give me the value should lie between 0 and pi by 2 correct so your starting point of the number line will be 0 ending point will be pi by 2 and you've got two values of x which is pi by 6 and pi by 2 so pi by 6 will be here and pi by 2 is already present correct so this is your number line i am sorted now okay so this divides the segment into 0 pi by 6 because pi by 6 is included pi by 6 to pi by 2 correct so this is the two disjoint intervals i've got two intervals now that is why i will have two cases number line also done third step done fourth step the most essential step and for this question the most trickiest step fourth step is what check the sign of f dash of x what did i get as f dash of x my f dash of x answer was 3 cos 3x okay so fourth step is check the sign of f dash of x which was 3 cos 3x so once for this case 1 i will check for this and case 2 i will check for this so case 1 for 0 and pi by 6 let's check the values okay now for what will so the values we which we are going to check is um between the the x value should be between 0 and pi by 6 we are going to check that but here you don't have x here you have 3x so i will have to equalize so i'm multiplying throughout by 3 so multiplying throughout by 3 okay i'm just going very slow so each and every step is covered pi by 2 so 3x lies between 0 to pi by 2 and which function are we talking about we are talking about cos so i'm just giving you a little recap okay a recap of your lower standards you used to have four quadrants you have studied this before a lot of times in the first quadrant so this is your first quadrant second third and fourth quadrant okay now what do you have is in the first quadrant all the values are positive so this is 0 this is pi by 2 this is pi this is 3 pi by 2 okay all values are positive here sine and cosec positive all silver t here tan and cot and here cos and sec so what we have got is the values between 0 to pi by 2 0 to pi by 2 all values are positive between 0 to pi by 2 all values are positive so this function is also positive so i can easily claim so i can easily claim that the function is increasing function okay if you still want to check further what you can do is in this f dash of x you can substitute 0 you can substitute pi by 6 let's try okay i have already proved that it's increasing no need to try further okay but this is also a step that we can try okay f dash of x is equal to 3 cos 3x let me put the values which is my domain values 0 and pi by 6 so once i'll put 0 in place of x so 3 into cos 0 cos 0 value is nothing but 1 so you get 3 
then if i try to find f dash of x for pi by 6 so i'll put pi by 6 in place of x so this will become 2 3 into cos of pi cos pi by 2 is nothing but uh, so i'll write it full form cos pi by 2 is nothing but 0 anything into 0 is 0 so you're getting the answer as 0 so your answer it's already increasing f dash of x is increasing it's greater than 0 but it is also equal to 0 you've got that right you've got you've substituted the value and you found oh it's it's not only an increasing function but it's also equal to 0 correct so it's increasing so f of x is increasing for x it's an increasing function for x belonging to value 0 and pi by 6 so this was for pi by 6 we have weight we have one more domain to solve correct remember the lumber line pi by 6 to pi by 2 we are done with 0 to pi by 6 now pi by 6 to pi by 2 case 2 what are we checking f dash of x in the last step what do we check f dash of x what is my domain right now for pi by 6 to pi by 2 so we want to check the value of x falling between pi by 6 and pi by 2 again you have 3x here and you just have x here so i'm just multiplying with 3 throughout so this gets cancelled so between pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 what is the value of cos pi by 2 between pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 go back to the quadrant between pi by 2 so this is between pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2 cos is negative here also negative here also cos is positive only in first and fourth quadrant but here in this domain we are talking from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 so cos is negative so negative means it's a decreasing function again you can always substitute pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2 in f dash of x so i'm just directly writing the answer when you substitute pi by 2 in place of x here what will you get 3 pi by 2 value of 3 pi by 2 is 0 so you will get answer as 0 if you substitute pi by 6 you've already substituted pi by 6 when when you substituted pi by 6 you had got 0 again so this function is decreasing correct this function is decreasing less than 0 also it is equal to 0 correct so f of x is decreasing at x belonging to pi by 6 to pi by 2 okay i hope this is very clear and also here you will have the square brackets because it's included correct okay so i hope it's very clear and i'll see you in part two with a lot of questions on slope and tangent form and maxima minima, minima explained in the same detailed format as i've explained in this video see you in the next video